Welcome everyone to another review of IDW Sonic the Hedgehog, and today we're looking at Issue 42, the second part of Zeddy Hunt. As always, before I recap the previous issue, I will be giving my obligatory spoiler warning. Last time, Zabek began tracking down and reuniting with his brethren, while also attacking the towns they originally targeted with the Zombots. Along the way, they learn of the restoration and the threat they pose, and when the Zeddy fully reunite, they hatch a plan to take down the organization, which involve attacking one more target town to establish a pattern, then doubling back and attacking Restoration HQ. So far, their gambit is paying off, as heavy hitters like Sonic and the Chaotix are waiting at the remaining two towns for the Zeddy's arrival. Jewel checks in on the Chaotix, Sonic, and Tails. The Chaotix believe they are ready for a Zeddy ambush at their location, while Sonic's taking some time at his town to relax with what I assume is hot cocoa. He is in the chilly location after all. Tails is in his central city lab working on some anti-Zeddy devices. The Zeddy Zappers, based on the Chaos Emerald Siphons Zavik and the others wore, will turn their own electromagnetic powers against them. They'll be rendered powerless so they can be easily transported back to the Lost Hex in the Zeddy Launcher. Wait a minute, Tails. You just modified your rocket from Sonic 4, didn't ya? I'll let it slide since time is a factor in all this. And time has run out for our heroes as the Zeddies start attacking Restoration HQ with a literal bang. Once inside, they start tearing the place apart. And possibly people too, we may never know. A couple of Restoration soldiers arrive with their Wispins, but they are no match for the stylish moves of Xena the Zeddy. As the Deadly Six soon learn, that's all the soldiers this place has. Yeah, according to Master Zick, the world prefers to live in peace. Whenever Eggman launches the occasional attack, the Restoration tends to let Sonic and the other big heroes do their thing. And with that, Zabbik decides to head straight for the Restoration's command center. Fortunately, the command center's doors are sealed, for the moment. Tangle and Whisper stand ready behind a barricade, while Jewel sends out an SOS. The Chaotix, Tails, and Sonic make a beeline for the base. Hmm, I wonder who will get there first. Zomom stumbles upon the machine shop, where Bell and the Chief are hiding. Just before he finds them, he's stopped by... Dr. Starline? What's he doing here? Let's turn back the clock to just before the Zeddy attack. Starline's reason for visiting Restoration HQ is because he wants Bell. Guess her karate kick action left an impression on him in more ways than one. He figured out she was one of Eggman's badniks that was built during his tinker phase. One of the advantages of being a former Eggman fanboy is, you pick up the habits of your ex-idol. Being a unique creation, Starline hopes to study Bell in the hopes that it may advance his plans. Instead of barging in with his tricor, Starline will enter through the tool shed entrance and sneak around, hoping he wouldn't get caught. Luckily for him, that's when the Zeddy began their attack, and the chaos allowed him to easily move around the place. He arrives at the machine shop and hypnotizes Zomom into leaving and forgetting about this room. Bell recognizes Starline, and the Chief is ready to defend her when Starline demands she come with him. I like this because despite still being an occasional screw-up, he still considers her a member of the team. Too bad the Chief can't defend himself against Heal Spur Toxin. When Starline threatens to use a second dose of Toxin, which will kill the guy, Bell surrenders. They make their way back to the elevator, only to find that power's been cut due to the Zeddy attack. Not a problem for Starline. He activates his Tricor and escapes with Bell. The Zeddy arrive at the command center door. Before they can pry it open, our blue hero arrives to give them a very special greeting. The stage is now set for a long-awaited rematch between Sonic and the Deadly Six. This issue introduces the arc's secondary plot thread, Starline kidnapping Bell the Tinkerer. I have mixed feelings about this. First of all, I like the idea of a story where Starline would go after Bell. As previously mentioned, she is a rare piece of Eggman slash Tinker tech that Starline would gleefully study. More than likely, he'd probably incorporate the results of his study into whatever's in those green tubes. And poor Bell. Two issues earlier, 
She learned the horrible truth about her creator, only to have that creator's former employee show up to kidnap her. I hope Ian and Evan don't do anything bad to her. She suffered enough. Thankfully, future solicitations, specifically issue 45s and 46s, reveal that Starline's kidnapping attempt will most likely fail as Bells with Amy, Jewel, and Tangle as they go for a nice relaxing camping trip until something happens. So now I'm interested to see how Bell escapes Starline's grasp in the remaining two issues. The problem is, the Starline Bell plot thread, which could be its own four issue story arc, is tacked on to the Zeddy arc. This didn't completely come out of nowhere. Issue 44 solicitation mentioned Bell's kidnapping. At the time, we didn't know who was responsible. Now we do. So it looks like it's another case of Starline hijacking the plot. Like what happened in Chow Races and Badnik Bases. Which is funny because the only reason Starline's here is because of his interaction with Bell in that arc. I think the reason for the secondary plot is, the Zeddy plot is moving a bit fast. I have a feeling the climax of the main plot will be in the next issue. And they need enough story material to fill out four issues for a trade paperback. Let's shift over to the actual subject of the arc. Part of the reason why the Zeddy had little trouble tearing through Restoration HQ is because of the lack of soldiers present. The Zeddy themselves were disappointed. They were expecting an army. Instead, they got a shopping mall environment and some mall cops. I think it's because Jewel is running the place now. I mentioned the mall aesthetics back in my Issue 37 review, but to briefly recap, I believe Jewel modeled New Restoration HQ after Spyro Hill Village a little and that town had a lot of shops. The reduced security is because the world is more or less returning to the way it was before the Sonic Forces War. Yes, Eggman is still out there, but as Master Zix stated, the restoration would rely on Sonic, Tails, and the other big heroes when dealing with him. The organization basically serves as their eyes and ears, as well as the cleanup crew. There was a bigger military presence in the earlier issues, but that's because one, Back when they were known as the Resistance, there was still some fallout from the Sonic Forces War. Even after being reformed into the Restoration between issues 12 and 13, there was still a strong military vibe. Two, Eggman's Metal Virus was running rampant. And finally, three, Amy the hammer-wielding powerhouse Rose was in charge. After being handed the keys, Jewel, who is not a fighter, probably decided to reduce the organization's military presence a bit. Though that might change thanks to the base being invaded by two different factions independently. Here are some random highlights of the issue. First, the dynamic between Zavik and Master Zeek. The former's respect for the latter has been present ever since Sonic Lost World. But here, we see it fleshed out a bit in this issue and in the previous one. Master Zeek provided the necessary information and Zavik made his decisions based on that information. It shows that while Zavik is the leader, he will always listen to the counsel of his old master. Another highlight is Sonic's thoughts while he's chilling in Winterberg. He reflects how he and his friends have worked hard to put the world back together, especially after the Mel virus incident, and he'll stop at nothing to make sure those like the Deadly Six don't tear it apart. What really sells it is this panel of him watching children playing in the snow. I'll let it speak for itself. This brings me to my final highlight, the art. The issue marks the return of Tracy Yardley as a solo penciler for the comic. Don't get me wrong, many of the other artists on the IDW comics have been great, but seeing Tracy's work, along with Matt Herm's coloring, is nostalgic to me. I can never not love the occasional memeable faces slash poses he draws. And I want to know who's responsible for the Starbucks-inspired coffee brand named after our two-tailed fox. Glad to see in-universe people love him enough to create a franchise after him, but take a look at the name. You may insert your own Nintendo-related jokes here. With two more issues left, I'll be entering wait-and-see mode. As I said, there are now two big plot threads that need resolving, and I hope the resolution is satisfactory. So join me next time as Sonic once again fights the Deadly Six, and possibly see how the Starline Bell situation develops. See you then! Hmm, I don't think this Sonic Adventure mod with Xena as the lead is going to work out.